Welcome back to the product video sessions and back to the paperboy. We go into the paperboy plan again in the first phase. And we open the business model canvas of the paperboy. Uh, this one has been created in one of the previous sessions. And a business model canvas is good for what it is. Uh, but there are more things to tell about the business model and also about this paperboy business model. Uh, then you can uh, enter via a business model canvas. For instance, a value proposition in a business model canvas is meant for the customer or for a customer segment. But there are other value propositions in a business model that might be important. Like a value proposition from a partner or that you provide to a partner. And in a business model canvas you can enter so-called values like cost and revenue. But what about values that are of interest to a customer? For instance, a value like promptness or the reliability of the paperboy towards uh, the readers. And uh, in a uh, business model canvas, you can enter resources like a route. But if you are familiar with the area of business architecture, a business architect is used to talk about capabilities or business capabilities. And you would like to enter these too. But you cannot do that explicitly in a business model canvas. So let's try now another type of business canvas. And we use that as an additional view on the same underlying business model. So go back here. And we introduced already previous time a so-called business model innovation canvas as invented by Peter Lindgren for this purpose. And you see already a couple of these uh, yellow slips. These are the same elements as in the business model canvas because we had entered them in the business model canvas. From there we mapped them into the business model. And now we selected, we selected them back and mapped them upwards in the business model innovation canvas. But to show you how that works, we just left open these customers, so we now do the same for customer, and we select the existing readers. Okay, select it, copy it, and there it goes. Maybe save it first. <coughs> and now we are as far as we got via the business model canvas. So let's now start to enter the additional uh, type of things that we just talked about, that you cannot do via business model canvas. So let's start, for instance, with adding a competency. Let's say we add route planning, route planning. Well, route planning is, let's say, a capability as opposed to route, which is a resource, route planning. Let's give it a different color, just to contrast between the already existing elements and the new ones. Okay, and we map it right away. This time it's a capability, and let's say it's used by schedule round, activity schedule round. Okay, yes, and let's say we now enter another value proposition. And let's say we enter delivery service. Delivery service delivery service, yes, and we give it a better position, and we map it right away, create mapping, and let's say delivery service is provided by the schoolboy in the role of paperboy, and this time to the newspaper company, a partner, in the role of publisher, right, complete, complete, and now we add another value. Let's say the value promptness, as I said, promptness, promptness, yes, complete, and we map it. This time it's, it's, we can create mapping, it's not a, let's say, plan value, but let's say it's a value that is delivered with the value proposition newspaper on the map to the customer. Okay, complete. Okay, so let's now see where we ended up with this. We go into the business model. You see here already value propositions. There is an, an additional value proposition called delivery service. Let's go into the definition. Value propositions. Scroll down. Let's first click on newspaper on the map. Met. Newspaper on the map. Here you see the already existing value proposition. This time, delivering what values? The value promptness goes with it. Uh, go back into the table. S select delivery service. This is the new value proposition from schoolboy offers what? Delivery service to the newspaper company and role of publisher. Go up and go to competencies. Scale around. Select activity scale around. Here you see that activity scale around uh, uses competency route planning. And if you click this pencil, you see that it is a capability. Okay, you can close this one. And now we go uh, back here. 
and we open again the not the business model innovation canvas but the business model canvas. Remember from the previous session that there was one element, and when you scroll down a little bit, you can see that all of them has has been mapped, but there's only one extra bicycle cost that has not been mapped yet for a purpose. We are going to map that now. Extra bicycle cost. But hold on. There is something special with this extra bicycle cost. Who is interested in extra bicycle cost? Is that the customer? No. He does not care. It's something for the paid boy himself. Remember, in an even earlier uh, session, we explained the, dis the distinction between the concept of value creation and value capture. Value capture is about what is the result, or the proposition, let's say, of the business model to the owner of the business model, the business itself, uh, in this case, the paper boy. He is interested in this activity, extra bicycle cost. So we want to map it now as an activity created by the value, let's say, execute round, activity execute round, and it contributes to a proposition, let's say my proposition in the term terminology of our app, to the paper boy. Let's call that proposition cost proposition, cost proposition. So let's enter that one, but you cannot enter that again via the business model canvas, because you know value propositions here are only about customers. So we go back to the once more to the business model innovation canvas and we add another value proposition here, which we call cost proposition. Cost proposition. Again. Cost proposition is meant to express the value as captured by the big one. Cost proposition. Okay, here it is. And let's uh, map that one right away also, as we map all the other ones. Create mapping. And we flag now and we check it, my proposition. And it is uh, provider is here schoolboy, big boy, and all big boy, complete. Yeah. So, complete. So, and we will show uh, in a minute where it uh, ended up in the business model. Now we go back to the business model canvas again, with that only one not yet mapped extra bicycle cost, and we go in. But before we map this one, close this one, we first say, okay, I repeat that, we want to map this as a cost created by the activity um, execute round, and it should contribute to cost in cost proposition to the paper board. So let's first say this activity, execute round, should contribute to the new proposition of cost proposition. So we, we map that. But we, we, we have now, uh, we add now an additional mapping because it was mapped already. And we say, okay, it is now mapped to, it is now uh, pursues two propositions. One is the newspaper on map, select it. And the other one is cost proposition. And so select both in the multi-select box. Yes, and uh, yes, complete, complete, complete. Okay, so now we have, and I will, we will show you that in a minute, that this activity execute round is not only in the value proposition of the newspaper on the mat for the customer, but also in the, for the cost proposition to the paper boy. And given that, we can map this one, extra bicycle cost. We map this one also, create mapping. And we say, okay, Select value source. We say it's for the activity execute round. Yes, click it. And it pursues value proposition, cost proposition, cost proposition, complete. 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 And now we are done. But you will say, I don't believe you. But let's now go into the business model underneath. And we will show you all these things. So here you can already see, right? <laughs> this is the business model. There was already, as we showed you, the delivery service as a new uh, value proposition, but now it has the special heading here of my propositions. There is a cost proposition, right? So we, we go there, my propositions. There is now the cost proposition to express the value capture, right? And when we go to, um, to activities, hold on, we select this cost proposition row, go up. Here we see, in order to pursue this new thing, cost proposition, there, uh, by the schoolboy in the role of paperboy, he created a result to himself, so to say. Uh, based on the activity execute round, creating what values? The extra bicycle cost. You see? Okay, so all the elements are there. Now go back a while to here, and let's say we go back to the business model canvas. Here are now all these elements. They are all mapped. But now say these things are values. 
what if in the underlying business model these are measured, quantified, calculated? Can we see then the result also at Kappa's level? Yes, we can. So what we can do is, for instance, to make it very easy, we are not going to put a whole lot of calculation logic in. See for that earlier sessions. You know, that's going to our uh, revenue, no, no, so why do I go back into the uh, business model, newspaper round. Yeah, not, not needed even, so uh, go, go here. This was plan value, sorry, plan values. This one was plan value. Hourly revenue, let's just give it a, a measurement. Let's say uh, five, uh, five euros an hour. Five euros per hour. Euro per hour. Yeah, five euros per hour. Okay, complete. Okay, now let's open the business model canvas again. You see here, hourly revenue, five euros an hour. Okay, and by this, I think you got a all sort of complete impression of what you can do by uh, starting discovery in a value management platform by business canvases, for instance. Um, and uh, there's maybe one thing that we didn't demonstrate to you now. This paper boy is about just a single business model. There are other examples that you can make of an ecosystem of interacting business models. All of which can be discovered via canvases, but we don't do that in this video. Goodbye.